Hello, the, this is Al24 Breaking News live from Algiers and coming up next in our program. In an open talk with Palestinian President Abdel Majid Taboon, President states we have decided to host a meeting for all Palestinian factions. Ukraine's defense minister warns there will be a bloody massacre if Russia invades. Death tour from Indonesia's volcano eruption climbs to 34 and search and rescue operation are still underway. Hello again and welcome to those who are today's headline. In an open talk with Palestinian President Abdel Majid Tabun, Algeria President states, we have decided to host a meeting for all Palestinian factions, saying that the Arab League will be on Algeria next time. The President of the Republic, Mr. Abdel Majid Tabun, received Monday in Algiers the President of the State of Palestine, Mr. Mahmoud Abbas, who was warmly welcomed on his arrival, which reflects the close relations between the two brotherly countries. Abdel Majid Tabun revealed that Algeria is preparing to host the Arab League summit in March 2022 and is seeking to put the Palestinian cause at the center of the priorities of this important event. <laughs> We see that it is crucial to promote Arab joint action in our central primary cause and unify our position to support the Palestinian people. This is why we're preparing to host the Arab summit and put Palestinian issue in its core priorities. And we hope it will be an all-inclusive summit that will create a new start for the joint Arab action. Announcing at the same time a financial contribution of $100 million to the Palestinian National Authority and the allocation of 300 scholarships for Palestinian students in Algerian universities. The President of the Republic affirmed that Algeria wants to put an end to Arab divisions and splits, hoping the Algeria summit can unify Arabs. Algerian state decided to give you $100 million as a participation for the Palestinian state budget. And as stated by the official Palestinian news agency, Abbas briefed the boon on the latest political developments related to the Palestinian issue and the occupation practices that undermine the chances of peace and the two-state solution. On this occasion, the Palestinian president thanked President Taboon and Algerian diplomacy for their important role in supporting the Palestinian cause in international forums, in particular within the African Union, stressing the importance of continuing coordination between the two countries. Our Palestinian people express to Algeria its people, leadership and political powers, sincere appreciation and feelings of devotions. And as stated by the Presidency of the Republic, Mr. Mahmoud Abbas awarded the President of the Republic, Mr. Abdel Majid Taboon, the Great Medal of Palestine. The Palestinian news agency remarked that the medal was a sign of, of appreciations of Taboon's distinguished position and wise leadership at the national, Arab and international levels and in supporting the Palestinian people and their just cause. During a special visit of Al-24 News cameras to the Embassy of South Africa accredited to the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, Tarji Dafer Dr. Solo Patrick Ranakamis had this to say regarding the celebration of the 8th death anniversary of Nelson Mandela. The celebration of the passing of uh, Nelson Mandela is a key moment in terms of the international struggle against racism, inequality and exploitation because uh, President Nelson Mandela sacrificed part of his life in the fight against apartheid in South Africa. And we should remember that it was during the fight against apartheid that solidarity countries, including Algeria, played important role in terms of ensuring that freedom and liberation in South Africa is, is achieved. And it is from this experience that the world today is pushing for a fight against racism in all its form and manifestation. And we should also take time as we uh, celebrated the passing of Nelson Mandela to recall how Algeria 
played a key role in terms of its support to the liberation struggle in, in South Africa. Uh, we have seen that when Mandela was released, Algeria was one of the first countries that he visited to say thank you for the contribution that uh, Algeria has made in the liberation of South Africa. And that served as the basis for the strong bilateral and political relations between South Africa and Algeria in the post-apartheid era. This visit coincided with the aid campaign launched by the Embassy of South Africa accredited to the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, which would last until next March in support of young Sahrawi children in Tindouf refugee camps to achieve their rights to study just like any other children around the world. The Embassy of South Africa in Algeria is also accredited to the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. And as part of our diplomatic engagement with uh, Western Sahara, the Sahrawi people, we are in solidarity supporting the people and the government of Western Sahara in its quest for liberation, in its quest for territorial integrity and independence. It is for that reason that um, we as the mission conduct regular visits to the camps to see firsthand what is going on uh, in, in, in the camps and also to get an inside understanding of the plight of the Sahrawi people. In addition, we also encourage a working visit by our principals to, 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 to the camps. Recently, uh, Minister Naledi Pando visited the camps as part of the South Africa solidarity with the people and the government of Western Sahara. And as, a, as, as the mission, we have since last year initiated a people-to-people -people support program wherein we are collecting voluntary contributions from individuals in a form of educational support material. After Ukraine has accused Russia of massing tens of thousands of troops near its borders, raising the prospects of open war between the two neighbors, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said his armed forces were capable of fighting off any Russian attack as the country marked its National Army Day with display of U.S. armored vehicles and patrol boats. U.S. President Joe Biden has pledged his unwavering support to Ukraine in its standfall with Moscow and will hold talks with Russia President Vladimir Putin to try to resolve this crisis. Still with the same story, Russia is provoking Ukraine by deploying tanks and additional sniper teams to the front line of the conflict in eastern Ukraine. Ukraine accused Russia saying that it is ready to inflict fatalities on Ukraine soldiers and try to return fire. Ukraine's defense ministry issued that statement hours before U.S. President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin will speak in a high-stakes video conference after Russia mass troops near Ukraine's borders. In the same line of thought, U.S. officials state that President Joe Biden will hold a high-stakes video conference call with Russian President Vladimir Putin later today to address the growing tension in Ukraine. Biden had earlier consulted with European allies to discuss plans for severe economic sanctions against Russia and seek a strong ally stance in support of Ukraine's territorial integrity and sovereignty. They called on Russia to damage tensions and return to diplomacy and said their teams will stay in a close touch. China on Monday threatened to take firm countermeasures in the U.S. proceed with diplomatic boycott of February Beijing Winter Olympic Games. Let's follow this report. We've also been clear and we've heard from our allies, our NATO allies uh, including, uh, that we uh, believe there is an opportunity, a window before us to resolve this diplomatically, uh, chiefly through full implementation of uh, the Minsk agreements. Uh, that is our priority. That is where we wish to invest our efforts. At the same time, uh, we have been clear that if Moscow shows no interest in investing uh, in a diplomatic off-ramp, uh, that the United States and our partners, and we heard this loud and clear from our NATO allies in Riga last week, that we would be prepared uh, to implement measures that we have not uh, implemented in the past. 
um, specifically. Should Russia follow this path of confrontation and military action, uh, we have made clear to Moscow that we will respond resolutely, uh, including with a range of what we have called high impact economic measures uh, that we've refrained from using in the past. And it's that last clause. Minor clashes broke out between protesters and weak police in central Athens on Monday afternoon after a rally took place to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the fatal police shooting of teenager Alexis Grigoripoulos in 2028, or let me say 2008. No arrests or injuries were reported after the clashes, which did not last long. They followed a peaceful march by about 6,000 people in 2008, killing a 15 years old boy in Athens, triggered week of the worst rise the Greek capital had seen in decades, with extensive destruction of shops and other private and public property, looting and street fights with police. Far right candidate for the French presidential election, Eric Zamor, called on his supporters to change the course of history and move toward reclaiming France during his first rally in Paris in front of large crowd. Local media reported his, uh, his wrist was injured and that his doctors have ordered nine days of rest. Eric Zamor continues and signs his criticism against Emmanuel Macron, the candidate of the re conquest for the presidential election, renews this morning his bitter criticism of President of the Republic on BFM TV. Let's follow this clip. Emmanuel Macron. Emmanuel Macron, that is exactly what I meant. He's this great void. He's like a teenager looking for himself. You get the impression as though it's a guy who's not finished. You get the impression it's someone who's not thinking clearly about anything. The German government has reached its renewal time as this week the new designated income, income chancellor Olaf Scholz presented the list of the government he will have for the next period. Olaf Scholz paved the way for uh, chancellor in Germany as a successor of the 16 years chancellor Angela Merkel. Olaf Scholz was given the green light to replace longtime chancellor Angela Merkel in the German government. Scholz presented on Monday the list of ministers that he would rely on starting from next week in the new coalition government. German pro-business Free Democrats agreed on Sunday to form a new government with two center-left parties, which moved Olaf Scholz a step forward to occupying the chancellor's chair. And for the building of the state's institutions, so as to make the Social Democrats party stronger and have the chance to make a coalition with the FDP and the Greens. We had weeks-long intensive work so as to materialize this coalition. The new government of Olaf seems determined to work on climate change as well as modernizing the country. Furthermore, the Free Democrats are willing to strengthen cell phone and network services as well as legalizing the consumption of cannabis in the country. The unveiling of the new government showed that half of the power belongs to women as the new Chancellor Olaf Scholz described himself as a feminist, and he added that Germany's security is now in the hands of strong women. The Greens' five cabinet members in the government, led by Olaf, also included a Turkish Norwegian federal minister. The six-decade and long-time vegetarian Sam Ozdemir was designated in agriculture ministry. The Free Democrats insisted that there would be no rise in prices and the economic situation would loosen up. On her behalf, Angela Merkel, who remained in the office for roughly 16 years as a chancellor and caretaker, did not seek re-election, as her party will convert to opposition. And now for more updates about the new variant of Macron that keeps spreading, let's follow Islam's lead on the roundup all over the world. According to the American Academy of Pediatricians, children accounted for more than 22% of all new COVID-19 cases in the previous week, which is considered extremely high. There have been at least 133,022 new cases among children, which is about 2,000 more than the previous week. As said by Argentina's health ministry, the Omicron variant has been detected for the first time. The first infected person lives in St. Louis and traveled to South Africa for a work event. Several hours later, the government urged citizens to use the Sputnik Light vaccine. According to the latest data, there are now 261 confirmed cases in England, 
Sajid Javid, the UK Health Secretary, announced the number of confirmed Omicron cases in the UK reached 336, an increase of 90 infections in 24 hours. There were 261 recorded cases in England, 71 in Scotland and 4 in Wales. There has been yet to be confirmed case in Northern Ireland. France has now identified 25 positive Omicron variant cases, 21 confirmed cases were discovered in people returning from South Africa, and 4 were discovered as a result of local infection. French Prime Minister Jean Castex announced a slew of new Covid measures, claiming that the virus is circulating throughout the territory and that pressure is rising in hospitals as the country grapples with an increase in infections. Thailand's Ministry of Public Health announced the country's first case of the Omicron variant in the U.S. citizen, who entered Thailand nearly a week ago. According to officials, the 35-year-old American citizen had been living in Spain for a year and was inoculated in June with a Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The death toll from the eruption on Saturday on the highest volcano on Indonesia's Java Island have rise, has risen to the least 34 local officials said and rescue operations are still underway. Mount Sumeru in the Luma Jung district of East Java province ejected thick columns of ash more than 12,000 meters into the sky, with searing gas and lava following down its slopes after the sudden eruption. After sentencing the former leader Aung San Suu Kyi, who was convicted in ruling on Monday to be sentenced to two years term for encouraging the, to, break, to break COVID-19 protocols a day after, a senior Myanmar Juanta official, also with Myanmar Information Minister, stated that the detention of the former leader shows that no one was above the law and Myanmar's judicial system has no preference to anyone. Solomon Islands Prime Minister survived no confidence motion after accusing Taiwan agents of working on a coup in a bid to remove him from political scene and decision making in the country. This comes at a time when Australia and New Zealand are sending military troops to the islands and the continuity of anti government rights in the country. Turkish President Rajab Tayyip Erdogan met on Monday Sheikh Tamim bin Hamid Al Thani, Amir of Qatar, where he went to attend the 7th Turkey Qatar High Strategic Committee meeting. A Turkish delegation of ministers and business leaders also met the Qatari counterpart. On the other hand, the Turkish President Rajab Tayyip Erdogan stated from Qatar precisely that the attack on Muslim houses of worship on Cyprus will not go unanswered. The Zionist entity fighter jets fired missiles on the Syrian port of Latakia, damaging containers. According to officials, the attack took place at uh, 1 a.m. morning, local time today, Tuesday, where several missiles struck the container area in the port, setting some, some of them on fire. Syrian state TV reported that five explosions were heard at the port and a huge fire erupted in the container area which made fire engineers rush to the port, yet no fatalities were inflicted. A bomb killed four people in the southern of Iraqi city of Basra near a major hospital, the Pedidamontele Shia Muslim city today, Tuesday. The first such attack in years in a part of country that has enjoyed relative stability, and the senior official said, no, the so-called ISIS militants were suspected of carrying this attack out. Sahel region is witnessing unprecedented instability and insecurity conflicts of interest between superpowers, civil wars and terrorist activities, which resulted in hundreds of people killed in Niger, Burkina Faso, as well as in Mali. More with Hussein Burkan. At least 12 Nigerian soldiers and dozens of terrorists were killed in intense fighting in western Niger. Inside the so-called Three Borders area, the Nigerian Ministry of Justice announced. In Niger also, an attack by suspected rebels on an army camp in the West African crisis state killed a total of 79 attackers and 29 troops, according to official reports. 
The attack was on the base of the G5 Sahel, a group in which Mauritania, Niger, Chad, Mali and Burkina Faso are fighting together against insurgents in the Sahel region. In Mali, two explosions occurred in two United Nations camps in the city of Gao, causing damage without any casualties. In Mali also, it is reported that at least 31 civilians were killed and eight others wounded in an attack by armed men on a bus. The attack took place in the east of the country near the city of Bandiagara in the Mopti region. Ethiopia's government announced on Monday that it recuperated the two major towns from Tigray rebel groups. The government communication service tweeted that Desi and Kom Bolcha were freed by the joint Gallant security forces. This last operation comes after three, 13 months of conflict between Tigray rebels and Ethiopian forces and killed thousands of people. And finally, a Kenyan police officer said at least five people were killed in an overnight disaster in the capital, Nairobi, before the shoot himself dead. The police dictatorate of criminal investigation tweeted about the incident, saying that the officer first killed his wife in their home and shot, and shot her in the neck before leaving with his service-issued AK-47 rifle and started firing insanely at innocent members of a public angry residents near where the incident took place later set tires on fire on a road in protest against this violence to this and ladies and gentlemen let's have a reminder for our main stories In an open talk with Palestinian President Abdel Majid Tabun, the President of the Republic says we have decided to host a meeting for all Palestinian factions. Ukraine's defense minister warns there will be a bloody massacre if Russia invades. A death tour from Indonesia's volcano eruption climbs to 34 and search and rescue cooperation are still underway. That's all what we have for now. See you at 6. Bye for now.